So we have I think, the original uh, maintenance kit for the Diablo disk drive with a can of oil and new HEPA filter. So we're going to finish our drive maintenance. I think I have a good, uh, good view of it. There you go. So that's this underneath this here. There's a felt right that needs to be bottom. oiled. Uh, so can you figure out if it's dry? Looks very dry to me. Yeah, I'm not seeing any oil at all. So there's a bottom one and a top one, as you see. Oh, there's one way, way, way at the bottom. Okay. Okay. So oiling will do. Right. Have to put the exact right amount yeah. down to odds and ends. So the uh, there's a tab. That's the bezel for the screen. There's a tab on each side, and this one was broken off. So made one with metal, so we can have it sit correctly. So here's the auto mouse all disassembled. We had to clean it. Um, it's, it's really interesting how it's constructed. Uh, this is really high end, so little contacts, they go and well do the micro switches. So they go on here. Three button, button mouse. So here's a little housing with the uh, encoders here and two ball bearings on each side they are fairly loose uh, fifth ball bearing over here and there's a little ball over here on the spring a little roller on the spring um, of course the big ball bearing so oh, this is really cute how it's done so they have balls and uh, they have some Teflon cups over here. I can put them correctly. And here are two rings on this thingy one. I can get it. Difficult me. It goes underneath. And that one goes on top. So clearly very well thought out in the details. A lot of groundbreaking so I'll take it with my finger. There's just no way I can take it some other way. And I guess that just comes on ooh, comes on top except there is something for a cable. Yeah, but okay. This is not going to be that easy. All right, so All right. Oh, my ball's gone. That one. So you can tell this was not user repairable here or cleanable. I have another added difficulty that I cannot go in front of the video camera. There we go. So we got a special, this is a, a mouse from the Xerox Museum and we got a special waiver that we could actually open it up and clean it up. Usually they only give, you know, lend it to you on the understanding that you won't do anything to it. Uh, they trusted us enough and here you can see yeah, now it works. So it's starting to work a lot better. It even works, you can see the balls turning you know something slippery like that okay i'm ready to control r so you need to know the commands right if you, if you don't know the control keys you're dead luca is the name of the file and here is so so the significance of this is that we were able to for the first time write a file on the disk and then get it back well, we got a little, I put that there. Some little. Ah, okay, yeah, some, yeah. some text. Okay, good. 
All right, so we have one mouse that works the right way. Let's try the other one that I just cleaned. The other mouse, and we found why it wasn't why it wasn't working that well is actually because the bearing at the top is broken here. At least it's lost its balls. We we found one or two loose in the whoop at the bottom of the mouse this guy here and so there's nothing we can do about it it, the, 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 it doesn't press the ball down and the ball gets up too much and does not do contact so that one will return to Xerox it was actually the park uh, Xerox park uh, lobby alto mouse so that's where it goes back we can't repair it I didn't test it before. Woohoo! There you go. Good. Tighten her up. Alright. Let me just freeze. There you go, the most. Lucas played with draw this morning. And and same thing it's it's, it's amazing for a first try. I mean, the, the fact that it, this busy curve just blew me away. And then for other things, you know, the, the concepts are not there yet, right? So yeah, we can see this is version 4.5 of October 10, 1979. Okay. And um, so I, I showed some of it in the previous video, but you discovered the transform things. Yeah, for example, let's uh, reload uh, my previous file with control R and then that's the mostly text one then I have to input the name of the file and then we get uh, the file you know, this, this you're, you're, you're a genius artist <laughs> <laughs> so oh, oh, huh? oh, it's still working yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's kind of slow yes yeah, right well uh, you know because indeed uh, every every part that remain an object is not uh, like the paint that is loading a, a bitmap of the paint it's just uh, more like McDraw, the old McDraw or uh, Illustrator, where every segment, every part is an object that, and uh, has its own uh, life and uh, attributes and so on. So, for example, we can uh, select. So it's a square there. Yeah, let's select, uh, let's say, this, uh, which is. Uh, right, a small and, and then you, you hardly can tell it's selected, right? Yeah, there is a small, uh, small uh, rectangle inverted. Right. That's it, that you don't have anything fancy like McPaint, uh, the famous uh, Marsing Hans, you know, the, you can see <coughs> clearly in the selection. So then, now you are going here, and you select, uh, for example, the transformation four point, then you go, are going to have four point, there is a <coughs> mess, but let's take this, 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 and this, and uh, you see, there is a, another line that is being, uh, the, the same line has been copied, the transformation of four points has been applied here. Okay, can you do it on the, on the yeah. curve something? Let's, yeah, let's, cl let's clear everything, that is better. So now everything is selected, now I can remove everything. What, what was the... Ctrl E for uh, everything, delete everything. Yep. Ctrl D for delete. Okay. I may undo if I like, but I don't want to undo, of course. So now again, something smaller probably is better. Okay, let's do on uh, just the four points. Yeah, that one is here, it's here to understand, right? Mm -hmm. uh, did you, you, you didn't uh, select ah, that? Ah, so right? yeah, exactly. This is something you need to do. You don't have much of a feedback uh, to understand yeah, yeah. The, the state. Alright, oh. so it... Yeah, you see, it's still selected, so in theory you may do something like this, and you get... I didn't... Well, see, it moved it this time. And I think if I do control, this is interesting, control U is undo. You have an undo. Oh! You know, oh. Like, uh, and you have a, a multiple undo. Wow. Something that on, you didn't have on McPaint. Wow. Because no, of I memory I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, this is, this is somewhere... This is somewhere between McPaint and MacDraw, right? Yeah, exactly. It's more advanced than uh, paint on a certain point of view, but other things 
for example, for the UI, it's not as intuitive as uh, on Maintain. Yeah, I can see it, sir. It's amazing, but not fully baked yet. Yeah. Like as the job said, well, there are all the ideas, but it's kind of uh, rough. Yeah, yeah. Very okay, cool. Ken was going to give us a little demonstration of uh, getting into Bravo. And as some of you had mentioned, when the Alto starts, it's not graphical. It's, it's a command line, so you have to type Bravo. And then the programs themselves might or might not be graphical. So, so then I have to answer and then. So you're in, into Bravo now. So you need common I or just I? Just I. So we can put in some text and escape. And then we can change the with the bold. So so how, how did you do that? Because oh, I never sorry. got to select anything. So, so so the um, text I just put in is automatically selected. So I just hit L for look, and then I can put in, um, you know, I will make it italics. Um, and the number will change the font. So you enter the, the text, enter escape, then press L, and it will allow you to format it. Yeah. And then you need a, so it's, and so they have a collection of different fonts. Okay, so it's it's really graphical in its WYSIWYG output, but not that much on the input. Can you use the mouse? You, can you um, select text? Yeah. I was not very successful at it either. <laughs> so you, you can put some markers. Like and right click. Oh yeah, you did. So what was that? Right click and left click, or left click and right click? Left click and, and right click. And then you do a look, and, uh, and oh yeah, it worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. also, and then there's also a way to uh -huh. you can select paragraphs and um, Somewhere, but, um. So should uh, look at you had a nice list of all the commands of mm -hmm. the Bravo program. So uh, still not the simplest program to use. Huh? Mm -hmm. You need to know quite a few things. You can see you can really use the mouse, all the three buttons to do some operations. All right. Yeah, it's a beginning. Yeah, very very beginning of. Uh, GUIs and mouse, as uh, Steve Jobs says, uh, three buttons too much, way too much. Two buttons too much. One button is but right. right? <laughs> so yeah, this is about all I can, can yeah. demo without looking at the manuals. So right, 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 right. Um, yeah, and he has a manual for you right there. This, this at the time yeah. would have seen totally miraculous, right? And then it could print, of all things, could, uh, it could print on, on the laser printer. This is the guy, one of the big guys. Butler? Yeah. Butler Lamps. Yeah. Yeah. One of the big engineers. In the he wrote to the manual, other people work on the program, yes. I think it's Whoa. Okay, yeah, here I got the, okay, the, the invisible scroll bar. If you move to the far left, um, you can scroll up or down using the mouse buttons. Oh, by moving, and it's there's nothing to indicate there's a scroll bar there. Um, well, when you move the cursor off to the left, oh, you wow. see it changes. It changes from the paragraph marker mm -hmm. to the... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I never noticed that. And then depending on which button you press, it goes up or down. Yeah. 
or I think the middle button will move to the line you clicked on in some way. Oh, that's an interest, uh, an interesting uh, cursor you got there. Yeah. So you could get, could you how how would you select a couple line of text like? Uh, you can click the you can left, left click the beginning, right click the end. Okay. And then, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we can unitalic, unitalic size, unbold those lines. All right. Yeah, you can do uh, okay. Oh, that's good. So you change the uh, how do you change the font size? So it, so, so the font size and the um, type are, are are combined. So you, oh, you you actually yeah, you actually yeah. change so the font it should, altogether. It should tell you what what number corresponds to which font and uh, in the summary. Yeah, go back to the summary. So, you know, look one is a so like one is times Roman eight. Um, Five is times Roman twelve. Um, so you just input a number. Yeah, nine is Helvetica eighteen. I see. So you you only have like ten different font choices. I I see. I see. Which is nine more than computing things at the time. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice to have uh, some picture about that that uh, is uh, maybe more on the layout yeah. program. I can check the layout program for the next time. Yeah. So yeah, right now we have just the first disk and it doesn't have that much program on it. So did uh, Carl, uh, did Carl try his... Uh, no, we, no, we have to. Because he said I think he saw that only is a problem. So I, I, I suppose so, he just yeah, sure. be run, run out of time. Be, uh, oh! So, so there is paragraph center. Nice. How did you do that? Um, it was a look thing again, yeah, or um, C for center. Okay, but uh, after a look command. But, well, first you have to make a paragraph which is delimited with control return. Oh, that's, ho, ho. The, that's the trick. Oh, can you insert one of the pictures you drew? No. So that, that's only on pre-press? I, I think so. Okay. Yeah, it would be nice to have the picture. Yeah. Because they said that this monitor is, was the first monitor that it uh, had enough points, pixels, to, to simulate half tones. So you can have uh, a very good representation of a uh, Grayscale. Yeah. Mm, yeah, it looks like none of the fonts on here are the, are the mathematical font. Yeah, well, it, this is just the. Uh, it's a diagnostic drive, right? So yeah. we, we, need to, we need to make a, a platter with uh, all the fun programs and all the fun fonts.